So the new shoes keep on coming this year and in today's video we are going to take a look at the first shoe of three to come from running brand Saucony and it is their new Peregrine 14. Now I use that term new very loosely here because this popular trail shoe has only had a very subtle update this time round with the midsole and the outsole looking pretty much the same as the previous version but we do have a redesigned upper construction. The only things I definitely know have changed are, unfortunately there has been a weight increase of four grams and the price has gone up five pounds here in the UK. So maybe not the best start, but let's dive into the video and I'm gonna tell you all about the newish Peregrine 14. Welcome back to the channel folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and it is first impressions time again. So definitely stay tuned because later on I'm going to be lacing these up, grabbing the GoPros and I'm going to be bringing you guys along on its first run. But I've got quite a lot of sort of running history with the Peregrine model. So I was a massive fan of the Peregrine 10s. I had several pairs, I ran hundreds and hundreds of miles in them and I loved every step. It was a great trail running shoe for me. When it got updated to the Peregrine 11, it was okay, but they did make the shoe a little bit heavier. They also added a fair bit of sort of bulky padding around the ankle collar. So maybe this didn't work as well as the 10s for me. But then when we got the Peregrine 12, Socking had stripped these back a bit. They'd made them lighter again. They'd taken away a lot of that added sort of padding. So I definitely preferred running in these. However, maybe that midsole was a little bit too stripped back and it lacked a bit of cushioning for those longer runs. But then Saucony updated it to the Peregrine 13 and they added a, a bit more depth in that midsole when it comes to the cushioning. So you've got a bit more underfoot protection and comfort. We still had that really nice lightweight upper, a great fitting upper on my foot shape. So these ran a lot more like the brilliant Peregrine 10 for me and I've really enjoyed running in them. So let's start off with giving you some specs on the new shoe. So like I've already mentioned, there has been a price increase of five pounds. So they now retail in the UK for 135 pounds, which is a bit of a shame, especially when there hasn't been a lot of changes made to the shoe. Happy to say we've got this nice bright red colorway. It's also available in a blue color option for men and two other colorways for women. Definitely a better colorway for me when I compare it against the all white Peregrine 13s that we had. I'm really not a lover of white trail running shoes. You know, you do one muddy run and it leaves the upper looking all grubby and a little bit tatty. So maybe not the most practical color option here in the UK. Weight wise, like I've already mentioned, the new shoe has had a four gram increase. So they now tip the scales at 294 grams in a UK 9.5. We got the same heel offset and stack height that we had in the 13. So it's a four mil drop. We've got a 28 mil stack height on the heel and 20 four mil under the forefoot. So you can see what I mean. It has only been a very subtle update this time round. The most noticeable changes come when we take a look at this new upper design. So Saucony have gone for a slightly softer, more flexible engineered mesh. And we've got a little bit more padding around the ankle collar and in the heel. And we've got a redesigned gusseted tongue. So the tongue in the 13 was definitely a fair bit thinner. So definitely been beefed up a little bit this time round when it comes to the padding. Should feel nice and comfortable when you pull those laces down nice and tight across the top of your foot. The lacing system looks very similar as before, but we do have the addition of this extra overlay around the top three lace eyelets and a more substantial overlay wrapping around the toe box just for a bit of extra durability. Happy to say we've still got a good level of on-trail protection from a nice toe bumper up front. And finishing up when it comes to the new upper design and Saucony have worked in a couple of handy features. So the first one being a pull tab on the heel. We've also got this little gaiter attachment down the base of the laces there. So super handy if you do run with gaiters. And then we've got this elastic strap uh, at the midfoot. So once you've tied those laces down nice and tight, you can stow them away so you don't get them snagged when you're out on the trails. Moving down to midsole construction, and just like we had before, we've got a full power run foam midsole. Now, Saucony do say on their website that it's a slightly softer blend, although pushing into the new midsole, it does feel very similar to the previous Peregrine 13s. Uh, good to see that Saucony have paired that up with a pair of their brilliant Power Run Plus insoles. These really are great insoles and they definitely make a difference to underfoot comfort. And then flipping them over, you can see we've got 
pretty much the identical 5mm chevron multi-directional lug pattern on the outsole and we've got Sokini's tacky power track rubber. After I reviewed the Peregrine 13s I had a few viewers saying that they really struggled when it came to grip when they were running on wetter rockier trails. Uh, I've got to be honest I've never had that issue with the power track outsole from Sokini. It's always given me good levels of grip and traction down here in Cornwall. And then in the forefoot there, we've got Sokini's brilliant flexible rock plate. So that's been put in place just to offer you a bit more underfoot protection when you're running on more aggressive and technical trails. So there you have it folks, the new Peregrine 14. Now I personally think with the Exodus Ultra being such a popular, great running shoe, I think it's taken the, the limelight away from the Peregrine model. So uh, let's get these on our feet, let's get out on the trails and see if the Peregrine 14 is gonna bring that limelight back to this popular trail running shoe. Okay, two miles ticked off already and I think the sunglasses might have been a bit of wishful thinking. It was sunny just as I left the house, but it's clouded over a bit, but I've got a gilet on and it's pretty toasty out here. So what do I think of the new Peregrine 14 in the first two miles? Well, like I thought, it does feel very similar to the 13s, the previous version. I haven't run in that shoe for a while, so again, Really happy with how that power run foam midsole feels. A couple of miles on the road there, pretty much, and super comfy, especially when it's paired up with that brilliant power run plus insole. So midsole's performing really well. And like I said, I forgot how comfortable this shoe is. So today we're gonna try and get in seven or eight miles. We'll see how the legs feel, but feeling pretty good so far. So let's get out on the towns and let's test out this new Peregrine. Okay, so we've ticked off seven miles already and we are heading home. So it's gonna be a slightly longer run, probably eight, eight and a half miles by the end of it. We've had a big mix of terrain, so grass, rocky trails, compact trails, and obviously lots of sand because we're running in a big sand dune. The body and legs are feeling good, so that's a big thumbs up from me. And as far as the shoe goes, well, like I've said many times, I can't really, tell the difference between this and the previous version, the Peregrine 13, which for me isn't a bad thing because I loved running in that shoe. And I would say the new version is true to size. So this UK 9.5 fit in perfectly on length, very similar width in the toe box. And I feel super secure around the midfoot and in the heel. So a really good fitting upper on my foot shape. I would say the only thing I am noticing is that redesigned upper. So definitely feels a bit plusher, having a bit more cushioning and padding around that ankle and in the heel. And I really do notice it in the gusseted tongue. So, you know, the shoe is a comfortable place to be and it runs really well straight out of the box. Okay, so I'm gonna get this last mile and a half done and then we'll wrap up this video back at the studio with a quick conclusion.
Alrighty, so we managed 8.2 miles on today's run in the new Peregrine 14s, but I've got to be honest, this is going to be a pretty short conclusion because I haven't really got a lot more to say. With this feeling so similar to the Peregrine 13s, I totally understand the whole update thing, but it would have been nice to see a few more changes when it comes to this popular trail running shoe. So just like the 13s, the 14s seem to work really well for my foot shape. I think that redesigned upper does improve the overall comfort of the shoe, although I never had any comfort issues in the 13s. Really good lockdown around the midfoot and in the heel and no signs of any irritation or rubbing or anything like that, which I always think is a really positive thing when it's the first run in a brand new shoe. I was a fan of the Power Run Foam midsole and that Power Run Plus insole combo in the previous version, and I'm still a big fan of it now. Uh, this Power Run Foam isn't the softest cushioning out there, so what it tends to offer you is a, a very planted, stable feel uh, underfoot when you're running on uneven terrain. And then you've got that nice bouncy insole, which gives you that extra level of plushness and comfort. Also, we mustn't forget we've got that great Socony flexible rock plate worked in there under the forefoot that offers great levels of underfoot protection on rocky terrain without compromising the flexibility of that midsole. I didn't really have a lot of mud to deal with out there on the towns today. There was a couple of small sections, but nothing serious. However, the outsole handled everything else really well. So good levels of grip on the road sections early on, and then great levels of traction on any sort of loose gravelly trails and in all the soft sand. So all in all, uh, I had a really good run out there today and the Peregrine 14s performed really well. Wrapping up, and if you were a fan of the previous version, the Peregrine 13, then I dare say it, you're going to really enjoy running in the latest updated model because they really do feel very similar. However, with the shoes running and feeling pretty much the same, it might be worth having a look for some deals on the Peregrine 13 now that the new shoe is out because I actually found the 13s on sportsshoes.com for only $69.99. So pretty much half price of these and you know a pair of peregrine 13s for under 70 pounds really is great value for such a consistent trail running shoe so there you have it guys my first impressions on the new peregrine 14 from Socony. and don't get me wrong i still really enjoyed running in this shoe i'd have just liked to see a few more updates made but maybe we'll get that next time round when it comes to the peregrine 15. we've got a couple of busy weeks ahead with lots of new shoes arriving at the channel to be tested. Uh, we've got some more shoes, road shoes from Socony, and we've got some exciting shoes from the new Balance brand, including their new Rebel V4, which I can't wait to run in, and the new Elite V4. So we're going to be testing those shoes out on the channel very soon. I also wanted to thank all our wonderful viewers for all the great race recommendations after the disappointment of not being able to run the Arc of Attrition in January because I got poorly. I was looking for a race at the end of Feb or the beginning of March and you guys came up with some great options. Although I'm not sure flying to New Zealand to take on the Tamawera Ultra is the best option. You know, I don't think uh, the £800 we earn a month from Google AdSense with the YouTube channel is going to cover the cost of flying halfway around the world and taking on a race that's probably been sold out for the last six months. But, you know, really appreciate the idea, really appreciate the recommendation. However, I have managed to find a race at the end of the month a little bit closer to home luckily so not as long as I'd have liked it in distance but I'm going to be taking on a 50k at the end of Feb uh, we'll have more to come on that on the channel very soon don't forget if you have enjoyed this video if you found it helpful to like comment share and subscribe because it really is a big help to the channel but for now thanks for watching thanks for supporting guys it really is appreciated we'll be back here very soon and as always stay safe and keep on running Look who I've bumped into on the way home. Hello. Fancy seeing you. Yeah. Fancy seeing How you doing? doing? Yeah, all right. Looking very smart in your Run for Adventure yeah. merch. Available at runforadventure.uk. How's the run going? Oh, it's hard, but it's good. It'll get easier. Exactly. League is just getting back into a running after a bit of a period off. Yeah. Building back <laughs> up for all the exciting races we got this year. Yeah, that's what that's what's keeping me going. So. <laughs> It's all good. And it's awesome. great to be here, isn't it? Yeah, awesome. Well, I won't stop you. I don't want you to rest too long. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'm happy to. Go for it. I'll see you back at home soon. Yeah, see you soon. Have a good run. You too. Take care out there. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye.